then yeah, we could do that. Um, right, so those cover the, the GSM client-based attacks that I've implemented so far. Uh, so there's only three of them, but I've, I've only been doing this for about a month or so on the client side. Uh, prior to this, what we were working on is doing fuzzing against mobile phones uh, because we wanted to be able to own everyone that walks by our office. And um, so for that stuff, we were doing baseband fuzzing. So we were using a malicious BTS to send uh, packets and try and fuzz the baseband of mobile phones. So everyone's familiar with, with how a, a smartphone is actually made up, right? It's basically, it's literally two separate CPUs. Uh, usually they share RAM, but basically you have a phone uh, like this, a feature phone, that acts pretty much as a modem. All it does is connect to the network, handle the, the networking stack, and then it will have a channel that's open to an actual operating system. So like, for example, one of these things or uh, one of these, right? These have a separate chip running the operating system. Uh, from our fuzzing point of view, we weren't actually interested in the operating system. We wanted to go for the baseband because the baseband has basically no user interaction, right? There's no like, do you want to authenticate this? None of that happens. The baseband is all pretty much done without any, uh, without any interference from the user, right? They can't have any access to it. So yeah, like we don't care about that part. We only want the other part. Yeah, cool. Um, the other awesome thing about going after the baseband is most of them are written in C and they were written in like the 90s, right? Everyone remembers how awesome the code was in the 90s when everyone knew about like integer wraps and how you had to be very careful about like sideness issues and so on. Yeah, so like fuzzing, fuzzing these things is quite cool. There's some downsides. Uh, actually, there's a lot of downsides. Uh, the, the biggest downside for us is that we have no visibility on the phone. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, actually. I, I've got a whole slide on why it sucks to do this. Um, so basically, all the baseband does is control the radio and run several stacks and like try and appear to be awesome to the user, whatever. Uh, they, they use a real-time operating system uh, for the old versions of iOS uh, up until four, but, oh, sorry, but one through three, they used Nucleus OS. Uh, now they use something called ReactX or React Thread. Um, Jeru was telling me about it last night, but I was very drunk, so I don't remember. Um, anyway, okay, so basebands are the target that we're going after. The way that we've done this is we took OpenBTS, which is an open source project that uses the USRP, which is the Universal Software Radio Project, and we've modified it to allow uh, third party programs on the network to open a channel to a phone and send data. So we, we implemented over XML RPC is uh, LCH open, LCH send, LCH receive, and LCH close. So we use the, uh, the bug mine framework, which is a framework developed by a friend of mine, Beng Nagi, my coworker. And uh, we use his case generation tools and his mutation tools to generate the GSM attacks that we then send over XML RPC, over, over OpenBTS through the USRP to the phone. Right? And it's all done over Wi-Fi because um, I don't like wiring up my house. So it's, it's fairly cool stuff. It's also very targeted because we use the, the MC to open a channel to a specific phone. Um, there's some problems with the way it works because if we, uh, everyone remembers from the RACH and the AGCH, it's all asynchronous. So we can inform a phone that it needs to open a channel but we have no way of knowing that that channel has been opened until the phone authenticates to us, right? So we can see that a channel has been opened, but we don't know by which phone. So when we're fuzzing multiple phones, if we knock one of them over, we then get the, the channel request that we believed was for phone A will be for phone B when it shows up again. Um, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, far more irritating is the fact that we have no visibility. We have no instrumentation, right? So. All that happens is we make a phone reboot, and we detect this by using a ping. You might have heard of it. It's a very sophisticated tool. It can monitor whether a phone is on a Wi-Fi network or not, and if it's not on the Wi-Fi network, we detect that the phone has crashed, and if it's crashed, we assume that it was some data we sent previously. And so it's very, very hard for us to go from uh, fuzzing attacks, which we know make a phone reboot, to usable exploits that we can use to own people when they walk by. Um, which kind of sucks, because like, it would be really, really awesome 
to have a backpack that you could walk around and it would just own people simply by having them uh, be within radio range. Um, right now in our fuzz farm we've got, well we don't have the iPhone and the, the Blackberry because they're with me, but we have uh, the Nexus One, uh, Palm Pre, Nokia N900, and um, we also have some MTK phones, but we're not particularly interested in those right now. Uh, here's a picture of what it looks like, it's very sophisticated. It's very dark actually, I don't think you can see it. Um, it there's a laptop and a USRP and a phone, pretty awesome stuff. Um, no, typically what happens is uh, baseband's are purchased separately by like, so HTC will go out and say like, all right, we need a radio and it needs to do 3G and UMTS and they'll find a commercial vendor who will sell them a baseband plus a radio and then they just plug it in, right? Uh, Apple writes their own, Blackberry writes their own and Nokia writes their own. The Nokia one is called BB5. Um, I'm not sure what the, uh, the Blackberry one is called. I've got some friends who have rim jobs around here and they can answer. But um, like ba basically people that care a lot write their own, everyone else just buys a commercial version. Um, they're not particularly sophisticated. Usually uh, like the Nokia, the Nokia interface is something called PhoneNet. Uh, it's now integrated into the Linux kernel. So there's a, a separate protocol based on sockets for talking to the baseband on a Nokia device. Um, on the iPhone, the interface is basically the old Hayes modem, like ATD, comma, one, two, three, four. Like that's how, that's how your iPhone talks to the radio. It, it treats it like a modem, right? Most phones actually act like that. It's, it's the easiest way. It's a common interface. Um, here's a picture of some phones that have attached to our, our uh, fuzzing, it's called the Kosick GSM Fuzz Farm. Uh, what would happen is when a phone associated with the, the BTS, they would get an SMS saying, welcome to Kosick Fuzz Farm. Um, I was running this in my condo and what happened was one day I came home and when I got out of the elevator, I got an SMS saying, welcome to Kosick Fuzz Farm. So. <laughs> I had to run back, just pull out all the antennas and I changed it so the new message actually doesn't say this anymore. It says um, like get your best erotic ads at blah blah blah. <laughs> that way they'll never know it's me, right? Um, so yeah, that basically covers it. We, we've gone over like the, uh, the fuzzing setup that we have, the fact that none of the bugs we find from that are any use to us, um, the different different attacks that we can do from a phone to the network, some of which are quite cool but none of which work over here. Um, the primary takeaways from this is for a very long time GSM security has been based on the idea that GSM is a walled garden. Uh, the only people who had access to it were people who could do very, very complex programming and had access to expensive equipment. Now there's a lot of open source stuff available and you need a five euro phone. Uh, you can make your own cable for next to nothing and you can start hacking GSM. So there's going to be a lot more issues with GSM going forward. There's a lot more people getting interested in it. Um, the USRP stuff means that OpenBTS is allowing people to set up uh, fake base stations and they can do interception attacks, uh, MC catchers, other stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like GSM is basically fucked, which is why uh, I'm now starting to look at how I can do attacks against 3G. Um, so in the future, most of what we look to do is we want to do uh, more fuzzing against GSM stacks, hopefully get some visibility by uh, someone who's really good at hardware getting JK JTAG onto one of these boards, and uh, we want to look at 3G and start going after 3G soon. So a big thanks to the, uh, the Osmo Com BB guys and the OpenBTS guys, because uh, I use their software extensively, and you've got four minutes for questions. Better ask them now, because I'm going to be drunk later. <laughs> All right.